plans on applying to USC, Tulane, George Washington University, as well as St. John's College to major in either philosophy or politics and law with a double minor in ethics and Spanish. After college, Isabella aspires to earn a seat on the Supreme Court or to be out of debt, or to be out of debt for retirement. <laughs> <laughs> and when asked about why she chose her topic, Isabella responded, those who can't do, teach. And her topic is happiness. <laughs> I'm a member of the scholar class of 2020. So what is happiness? Well, it's a question that major religions and cultures have asked for centuries. Some would tell you that happiness is an end goal, that human beings pursue happiness as life's purpose. But if happiness were an end goal, then single events would have the capacity to produce lifelong happiness. But even getting married or having a child won't guarantee happiness for the remainder of adult life, as I'm sure you well know. <laughs> the pursuit of happiness, however, offers more answers. Positive psychology is the study of what makes people happy and the processes by which we seek out happiness. It's based largely on Dr. Abraham Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs, a diagram explaining human wants and desire. The pyramid begins at physiological needs, the most basic components of human survival, food, water, sleep. Next, comes safety and security needs the desire to feel comfortable and secure in one's environment. Third is love and belonging, which stresses the importance of human-to-human -human relationships and interactions as an essential part of life. Fourth is esteem needs. Here, a person has satisfied base physical needs, as well as some psychological needs, and now has the capacity to seek career excellence. Esteem needs demand appreciation, accolade, and some form of recognition to be completed. The final tier of Maslow's hierarchy is self-actualization, the fullest realization of oneself and purpose. The diagram encompasses thousands of years of theories on happiness, most of which are Western in origin. Several philosophers and religious leaders had important and accurate ideas about happiness. Buddha and Socrates said that human desire was the root of all evil, and to find happiness, one must live with high ethical conduct and or minimize one's desires in the first place. <laughs> Aristotle created eudaimonia, the first recipe for happiness. He said that living a meaningful life combined with reaching one's ultimate potential would bring about true happiness. Pretty simple. The New Testament authors advised new churches to forego personal sat satisfaction and short-term pleasure altogether. During the Enlightenment, John Locke theorized the idea of the pursuit of happiness actively seeking long-term happiness over short-term pleasure. Eastern theorists, however, prioritize shared experience and community service over individual satisfaction. In modern times, the American Psychological Association defines a happy person as one who experiences frequent positive emotions and infrequent negative emotions. Today and throughout history, a prominent aspect of the pursuit of happiness has been one's surroundings. Available resources, or lack thereof, determine a person's capability to pursue happiness. Therefore, geography must influence happiness. Since the beginning of time, human beings have migrated and settled in order to fulfill a need, usually physiological. Almost always, this need was water. Settling near bodies of water meant access to transportation, agriculture, and drinking water. However, not all regions satisfy needs equally, especially basic needs, so mankind created new trading routes to fill them. And the process by which humans pursue need fulfillment, process emotions, and view the world is called psychology. Positive psychology is a subset of psychology, and understanding the roots of the field matters when we ask how positive psychologists operate. During the Industrial Revolution, clinical psychologists began to implement asylums, and because of a lack of regulations, had nearly unlimited access to patients. After experimentation, they began to question how body muscles and brain chemicals interacted, and neuroscience was born. Neuroscience is central to happiness, because without certain hormones and chemicals, no human being would have the capacity for happiness. The three most prominent are dopamine, serotonin, and oxytocin. Dopamine rewards the brain for certain behaviors, creating positive habits and influencing love and belonging. Serotonin plays a role in sleep, mood, appetite, and a person's sense of well-being. Oxytocin directly affects feelings of empathy and generosity, colloquially called the love hormone. 
So why not just draw everyone up and hope for the best? <laughs> well, if a person has unbalanced levels of dopamine, serotonin, or oxytocin, serious mental health consequences occur. Psychosis, schizophrenia, complete sanity, to name a few. Controlling happiness with chemicals alone is ineffective because while neurochemicals can influence the capacity for happiness, they can't give happiness itself. This led me to ask, what drives man's desire for self-actualization? And what is the role geography plays in the positive psychology movement, also known as the science of happiness? And what impact does this science have on psychosocial and physical well-being as seen through relationships, income, and health? One of the most frequent problems researchers face when examining happiness is how to quantify it. In the 1980s, Dr. Ed Diner created the Satisfaction with Life Scale, a questionnaire asking about quality of life, relative satisfaction, and completion of hierarchy tiers. By using the Satisfaction with Life Scale, among other mechanisms, researchers can then examine happiness in different capacities. One is in relationships. A 2002 study by the University of Illinois and the University of Pennsylvania surveyed the happiest and unhappiest students. The happiness reported multiple strong friendships and relationships with peers and mentors. But not just in work relationships, positive psychology also applies in marriage. A 2007 study by the National Council on Family Relationships found a correlation between elevated levels of depression and low marriage quality. Big shocker. <laughs> but positive psychology as it relates to physical health affects every country on earth. Physical health is determined largely through disease and exercise. Geographically, developing countries deal primarily with viral and infectious disease, while developed countries deal with genetic and non-contractable disease. A study by Asia Pacific Journal of Public Health names the three factors influencing life expectancy as demographics, socioeconomic status, and healthcare resources. While granted, almost no one is immune to disease, almost everyone can control the amount of exercise they do. However, upon serious physical injury, a person's capacity to complete their job may be affected, impacting income. Economic well-being is an often overlooked aspect of not only health, but overall happiness. The possession of present and future financial security gives a person the capacity to fill not only the speed needs, but pursue physiological needs more efficiently. The process by which basic needs are fulfilled relative to physical and political geography creates a baseline by which to examine international happiness. Physical geography affects well-being through water access, climate, soil, and food insecurity. Food insecurity negatively impacts well-being, especially for regions in the ultra-poor global south, like Bangladesh. Further, well-being remains unchanged as a result of variables like household income and social support, indicating that well-being for people with food insecurity depends firstly on food availability. Political geography makes access to resources, particularly clean water, more difficult. A one-time study by the Environmental Finance Center at the University of North Carolina in 2017 estimates that currently 1.6 million Americans do not have access to clean water. And while America has the physical geography to support clean water access, we lack the political power, funding, and infrastructure to do so. I sought out to understand the mechanisms by which geography affects happiness seen through relationships, income, and health. Based on numerous related studies, literature, and a subpar to your paper, <laughs> I concluded that geography affects happiness, firstly, through the hierarchy of needs. Both physical and political geography give a person the mechanisms by which to fill not only physical needs, but psychological needs as well. However, during the course of my research, I quickly realized that geography was one of many indicators in human happiness. Another is intelligence. This led me to ask, what qualifies as genius, and how does IQ affect mental health? In the spring, I will answer my remaining question to understand the genius potential, if I have any, <laughs> intelligent quotient, and the correlations between the two in mental health. Biblically, I connected my topic to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, which states, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared before him, that we should walk in them. As Christians, one of our main purposes is good works, and the completion of these good works is self-actualization. Further, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 20 through 24, talk about individual potential and life calling. Meeting the needs of creation is self-actualization in God's eyes. In the spring, I will also conduct two 
few null hypotheses, and a case study to better understand the mechanisms of happiness in modern society. My first null states, developed countries will be on average less happy than developing countries. My second states, Houstonians in a lower socioeconomic bracket will be happier than those in a higher socioeconomic bracket. For my case study, I will examine author Sean Aker's collected works on positive psychology, as well as looking at Mr. Aker's personal life through the lens of the hierarchy of beings. Thank you, and are there any questions?